More headlines as we get them. In the meantime, let's bring in Congressman Warren Davidson, Republican from Ohio, who serves on the House Financial Services Committee. We'll be asking him, he will be asking questions about cryptocurrency tomorrow, and we're asking about that in a moment. But first, uh, Congressman, welcome. Good to have you here. Let me get an initial reaction to what we're hearing out of the President of the United States. We had hoped that we were moving toward resolution with China. It sounds like we may be moving further away. Yeah, thanks. And, you know, we're following it as well. Obviously, we're rooting for a, a strong trade deal. Trade's a huge part of the strength of the U.S. economy. Uh, everyone in the world wants to be part of the great success that's going on in the United States in our economy. It's the best consumer market, best market for goods, services, capital, intellectual property. And unfortunately, China hasn't lived up to their obligations under previous agreements like the WTO where they committed to be a market economy, and zero countries recognize China as a market economy. So I think the president's right to insist that there's actually meat to the agreement, and it's not just uh, empty words. And if he just wanted that kind of empty words agreement, it would already be done. And your, your home state of Ohio does an awful lot of exporting as, as a practical matter. Uh, do you find that your constituents understand this and are patient, or how badly are they hurting out in Ohio? Look, they're, they're supporting the president. They know that we've been on the receiving end of bad trade policy for a long time. Uh, it is high stakes. It's costing uh, some of our ag folks a lot of money. It's costing some of our manufacturers a lot of money. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's impacting consumers. Uh, but people realize that China really has taken advantage of uh, really the world's generosity. And I think we should be working more aggressively to multiply our allies in this uh, ongoing uh, dispute with China. Uh, and uh, minimizing the number of enemies we have. So if we can unite people to deal with the bad trade practices that are nearly universally recognized around the world as emanating from China, intellectual property theft, dumping of steel, uh, you know, unfair practices in terms of uh, dislocating control of entities that want access to the Chinese market, while no similar uh, response uh, in domestic markets in the United States or even in Europe. Uh, this has really shifted the balance in a way that China's exploited and the whole world has a vested interest in seeing this resolved in a better way. Congressman, you make a very important point because when I talk to people in the United States on both sides of the aisle, or for that matter, around the world, there is almost no one who disagrees that the terms of trade with China have to change, particularly in some of the respects you mentioned, such as intellectual property. At the same time, the President of the United States has really said, we want to do this uh, just bilaterally. We don't want to do it multilaterally. Have you urged, are people in Congress urging him maybe to bring in some of our allies who would agree with us on many of the complaints he has about China? Well, I think when you look at uh, the options, some of that turns uh, to escalate things with China. And I think the president really wanted to have, a, and he does, he has a strong personal relationship with, uh, with uh, you know, China's leader and their leadership broadly. Uh, they feel like they've had productive trade negotiations when I speak to Ambassador Lighthizer. Uh, and others about uh, the progress there, and they wanted to leverage that. They weren't confident they were going to have that same uh, rapport uh, if they made it multilateral or the same ability to influence it. Uh, but, you know, when it comes down to tooth-tail ratio, maybe we do need to go to a more aggressive things, like sanctions against bad actors, companies that are dumping or companies that are, um, you know, intellectual property theft that you know people agree these are the bad actors it doesn't have to be about china it can be against the individuals and the companies and that's where china has been reluctant they get you know protective oh none of our people are doing that everyone in the world knows they're doing that the question is is the chinese government backing that or behind it or is it really just some bad actors in china and if we could unite the world to take sanctions for example against the bad actors it doesn't have to be country against country. We could just go after the bad practices. And I think we could build a lot of unity around that. So, Congressman, let's turn back to why we wanted you to come on originally, which was your role in the House Financial Services Committee. Tomorrow you're going to be asking questions of David Marcus about fa Facebook's plans for Libra. Uh, what do you go into that hearing wanting to find out? What do you want to know from Mr. Marcus? Well, I think a lot of people have concerns about Facebook's, um, you know, I guess filtering of content. And I think at the, at the core of that is they have a lot of your data and a lot of privacy concerns. And the way they've proposed Libra in their white paper, they've got a central authority that sits over top of this in the form of a nonprofit for sure. Um, but can either that entity Libra or the wallet that they've proposed Calibra filter transactions uh, in a way that the Facebook's already shown to filter content. And I think that really makes a lot of people uneasy. What are they going to do with this data? How do they safeguard it? And at the end of the day, uh, because they've proposed uh, sort of a variation of a, of a coin called a stable coin, um, they inherently have to have a central authority. And, and so will it ever be really decentralized? 
And I think the core of it is, can a stable coin that is really a, a synthetic currency comprised of five currencies, a basket of currencies, uh, truly be stable because you've got variances among the currency? Uh, Congressman, uh, how much of this is cryptocurrency and how much of it is because it's Facebook? Uh, it's Facebook, his name is on this. We heard from Mr. Marcus in the hearings in the Senate already where he tried to reassure people that they were trustworthy. This is part of what he said. Trust is primordial, and we've made mistakes in the past, and we have been working and are continuing to work really hard uh, to get better. And uh, we've invested in a number of programs, notably on privacy, election integrity, and a number of other issues. So, Congressman, is it crypto or is it Facebook? Well, I'll tell you, in the House Financial Services Committee, we're doing two hearings. One deals with Facebook and Libra, uh, and then the other deals with tokens uh, that might be differentiated from Facebook and Libra. And I think we shouldn't conflate the two. I mean, there's a big difference between, say, Bitcoin, which is what it, normally people think about when they think of the space. Uh, where's the headquarters for that? There is no headquarters. It's completely decentralized versus Facebook, where it'd be there. And if you look at the use cases, I mean, this is like the early days of the Internet. No one had in the early days uh, a vision for all the potential use cases of the Internet, nor have we, you know, exhausted them all. When you look at blockchain right now, you're looking at companies that are using a token to represent the title to a car or the deed to land uh, or a software license. These are goods or services that are transacted. And what Bitcoin is, is uh, proposed in some ways is, uh, is akin to what um, uh, Christine Lagarde was talking about at the International Monetary Fund when she was there, a synthetic currency, a basket of currencies that would be recognized uh, not quite as legal tender in a country. Uh, so what are the concerns there? It kind of crosses over from just a payment system to um, maybe even monetary policy concerns. So it really is different, but not just because it's Facebook. Facebook brought attention to it in a way where those of us that have been working in the space for a couple years now uh, haven't been able to get that same level of attention. So in a way, it's great. We're talking about the right issues, and we'll see how the hearings go. Yeah, I, 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 do you see potential advantages for the United States of America, for people here, if in fact it could be worked out in such a way that people could deal with some of the problems? And we had Jay Powell, the chairman of the Fed, just last week going through some of the concerns he has. But if you get through some of those concerns, could it actually be a better mousetrap? Well, when you look at blockchain and truly decentralized blockchain, open blockchain tokens, for example, which Libra doesn't quite meet that criteria today, a lot of the, a lot of the companies uh, with this innovative um, you know, concepts are American companies. Uh, unfortunately, they're launching in places like Switzerland or Singapore because the U.S. doesn't have lo laws. We don't have legal certainty. A lot of times when you see companies leaving our markets, they're avoiding U.S. law. In this case, they're leaving for places like Switzerland and Singapore to find laws. They need legislative certainty so that the capital formation can take place. So we need that light touch le legislative certainty. That's why we have a bipartisan, really nonpartisan bill, the Token Taxonomy Act, that gets to the heart of what's a security and not a security. Because the SEC has really driven a lot of the capital offshore with with their failure to provide the kind of certainty the markets need. And that's not entirely their fault. That's what Congress is supposed to do. So the great thing is we're finally getting the hearing that a lot of us have asked for for a while now. Okay, Congressman, I really appreciate your time. One thing's clear to me, you're prepared for these hearings tomorrow. I'm going to look forward to hearing your questions. That's Congressman Warren Davidson. He's a Republican on the Financial Services Committee.